You always told me, oh, we don't come from kings and queens. No. But we come from warriors and survivors. You know, I never opened up about being homeless. FAU was the first school I opened up to about that. It was like the whole world stopped. It's over, like, it's over. This is my dream, this is my life, and nobody's gonna come save me. My biggest goal is to make as much money as I can to help as much people as I can. At the end of that year, when I became a freshman All American, I was like, you know, I'm the first person in that school's history to do that. She bottom of your screen. And telegraph that pass, taken all the way into the end zone. That's Al Shire. Like, yeah, like, I know I could make it to the NFL. You know, being in college, I was, that was safe for me because I hadn't had that type of, you know, security in a long time. Get these boys right, dude. Dude, lead your squad, dude. Right now, people in the group right now, that's all it's about. The people in, in our colors wearing our jersey right now, that's all it's about. Don't let nobody in. Um, and I remember meeting with, with Chris Kiffin, Lane Kiffin, and Monty. If I'm gonna come in and tell me, like, listen, like, you are that guy for real, like. Let's go! That's what we got! That's all we got! Let's go, man! I love y'all boys! Let's go! It felt normal to me, even though I knew now for sure at that, that point. That that definitely is Yeah, normal. like, you know, I like, remember being yeah. there and Coach Kiffin, like, and the, uh, Coach Love, they're literally like, man, like, you taking care of your brothers. You, I'm taking them to school before I got to go to workouts in the morning. And it's like, then going to class, doing all that. Got to be back in time to pick them up from school and let them walk home from school sometimes, open up the apartment for them. Like, it was just like completely different um, as far as like how I had to go about a lot of things in my life. Because in college, you know, most people are focused on having a good time, you know, meeting girls. Ooh, it was the best years of my life. And you, you're literally like a parent, yeah. you know. What I can say is I'm definitely sorry that you had to go through that. However, I do know that you will be way more prepared to have children than I ever was because you already know what it's like to sacrifice because you've been doing it. All of, all the guys I was around, you know, spending money on whatever they wanted to spend it on, doing whatever they wanted to do. Like, I had never even bought myself you no know, clothes or nothing, you know, for real. You know, I was spending all my money, financial aid money, Pell Grant money, any money I got, like, on my family. I didn't necessarily like everything about it, but, like, I, I would do it all over again, for sure. Have a day, baby. Play with some passion. Play with fun. Let's go. Get out there. So go into that senior year, and you know I remember it was our bye week, and like it was the last day of pads before we got the rest of the week off. They ran like a little pick route, and as I was like trying to get over the top of the, the guy who was picking me, he catches the ball, he like breaks down, and I'm like out of control, completely out of control. Knee ends up buckling. And I feel like I hear the little pop and I just like let go and like drop to the ground. It was like the whole world stopped. Basically told me like, you know, he thinks I tore my ACL. And dude, I'm talking about like, that was, I, I don't think I cried that hard for anything. Crushed me because in my mind now I'm like, it's over, like it's over. So I probably had three days of like the darkest, darkest thoughts, darkest moments. If I would have stopped after my senior year when I tore my ACL and just been like, you know, I got a degree, first person to get a degree, played four years, set all these records at, at FAU, like, you know, I said, yeah, that's a, and that's still a great story to tell, you know, won right. a championship there. This is my dream, this is my life, and nobody's gonna come save me from, you know, from it. 
if I say I want to play in the NFL, I'm going to have to go do it. That which is for you should not pass you by, and that which passes you by is not for you. You telling me that as a 13-year-old kid helped me throughout my life because that was another moment where I'm like, this is a crossover for me. I had to decide, like, well, what did I want to do? And uh, I just made a choice to, like, keep going, you know, and I did. And I took it one day at a time. I'm really, like, I don't think I've ever really said this, but I'm really just in awe of how you just go through crap and you still just give it your all. Even though, you know, I don't see the internal struggle that you go through, the fact that you are going through that internal struggle, but you still push forward. And like, I remember, you know, you were in Alabama rehabbing. I'm thinking, oh, he's still gonna get drafted because, I mean, because. I went to the combine. Yeah, and you went to the combine. the combine. Yeah, so. Talking to all those coaches. Everybody's still yeah. telling me, listen, man, yeah, you probably get drafted uh, in the later rounds now just because of what happened, but no, no question, you're gonna yeah, get Yeah, you're gonna get drafted. It is a blessing, I think, at every stage. Even to get in the NFL, I think, um, you know, I remember one, one of the most, like, disappointing moments for me was being undrafted. Oh, God, I remember that. I'm, I'm almost about to cry, but I remember, like, with each, like, round that went by, I could just see your face. You were like, When you went into that room and you started crying. I remember I used to close my eyes when I was a child. Uh, we were standing in that motel and I would watch the draft and I would, every time somebody would get up and say, with the something pick in the NFL draft, they used to like, and I would just close my eyes and say my name. Your dream was to help your family and to get us out of poverty. And I know that that was crushing for you because you thought this was it. But I was very happy when you did get the call and they said, hey, we're not, we, you know, clearly we're not going to draft you, but we still want you to come out and try for the team. I tell people, you want to know what it's like being undrafted? It's like being a walk-on in college. Like you're at the lowest of the totem pole. So I remember going into San Francisco, like, made me more hungry. It made me more... Because you had a like, lot to prove at this point. You you had to show them, like, hey, I'm going to make you regret that you passed up on me. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to call them now to see how many pizzas I need to get. Gotcha. Usually we go there. I'll go there first, and then... Um, Kind of just talk to them, see how many people are there at the time. Uh, but it's so funny because no matter how many times, he'll tell me like, oh, it shouldn't be that many people today. The food is always gone. It's called Old Tent City. This kind of homeless encampment, just give back to the homeless. This organization called Shower Up is out there to where they have these shower trucks that essentially allow the homeless people to take showers and they're out there almost, I want to say two or three different times a week. Sundays is usually the day right now for me in the off season that works best. So I go out there on Sundays, you know, get some pizza for them, get some waters for them. We just really try to help them and give back to them. Get some water right here. 2018. And uh, just been trying to help people make make this place a community. And we got 
It's a lot of effort to do this. There's uh, people here that actually need help. We don't want to see people like on the street of Nashville eating from trash. Him doing stuff like this, saying no, we can't allow that. You know what I'm saying? We cannot allow that. Everybody gotta eat, eat nutrition food, get water and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's the more we can I wanna come down there. Okay, who go down there and show me something so I can take it. You know, I'm, when Moses first brought me down here, the first time I came, and like seeing how tucked away this stuff is, like the city, that Broadway is not even half a mile from here, you know? And to think like, this is what's here. People are coming here every weekend, every day to celebrate bachelor parties, stuff like that, you know? Me, I'm coming here, I obviously playing football and stadium right, right down the street, and you know, to see all this stuff over here is crazy, you know? So, there's something as small as like helping in this way um, with the showers that they do, me just coming and bringing food, whatever. Um, you know, it's big, it's big for them. Myself included, you know, dealing with being homeless, um, but never having to truly be on the street. It was a huge blessing, but there's a lot of people who can't say that. A majority of people who are dealing with poverty and who are going through things, they cannot empathize or see anything other than their struggle. When I was homeless, I used to always think that money was everything. As you start to accumulate wealth, you realize that it can't buy you happiness. Anybody that told me that, I'm like, whatever, that sounds great, but give me the money first and let me decide. But for all those people that don't understand that, you know, I want to try to help them. <laughs> so that's kind of like my goal. Things I want the most, you know, I always, you know, since I was a child, I always thought about being able to one, provide for my family uh, and help as many people as I could. So I said, like, there's so many people that need help. Yeah, yeah. Maybe way down there. Yep. So it's good because it's, it's one thing that you know consistently. Yep. Even when I read about you giving the student at FAU your last $50, who in their right mind would have gone through everything that you went through and still give someone your last $50? But I know you would because that's how I raised you, because I raised you that even though you're going through something, there's always someone out there that has it worse than you. Talking to my agent and looking at the different situations, it was like, okay, I think if I can come here and really make, and we can make it work, then I think it'll be a really good situation. This new contract for me is just like a fresh start. I know what my goals are, what my aspirations are for myself and for this team, you know, moving forward for the 2023 season. And I guess you just gotta stay tuned to see. I always used to tell you no matter what you're going through, like no matter what, you're still in a place that people would dream, they would give their right arm to be where you are. So soak it all in and just enjoy it. I just want to show kids like, hey, I have gone through all these trials and overcome them and you can too. I keep going because I know that that amount that I'm trying to reach is like, 
as much as possible, you know, because I want to be able to get back as much as possible. Big dogs, let's go! Offense, defense, special team, everybody playing complimentary football, find a way to win. That's all you can ask for. Like seeing all you, all that you've gone through, that you've never given up whenever life threw you a curve, you continued. I'm so proud of you, like you as a person, you as a human being. Like that stuff's gonna live on and you'll be able to like enjoy that forever.